Testing. Hello and welcome to season four, episode 11 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and today is the first day going live or filming anything in my new studio, which may look a lot like my old studio because I liked what I had going on before we moved. Hello, all of you, and I don't know why I'm not seeing anyone in the chat. If you are hearing me, can you please leave a comment in the chat? Maybe I'm not seeing the chat. Oh, they had me on a different channel for some reason. There y'all are. Yay. I missed you guys so much. I want you to know that. Three months of not going live with you in any organized manner was really, really hard on me. And, um... I know some of you as well. I don't have any thread on my thread dispenser. And I haven't gotten my fabric ready yet, but it isn't from not working pretty much nonstop for the last three months. And today what I'm going to do, if you've ever tried to free motion quilt and didn't succeed, I am going to show you how everyone can do free motion embroidery. And those of you in the VIP are going to get this free winged heart pattern. It will be in the VIP group for you to print out later today. And it comes in two parts. You don't have to print it out on this giant paper. I just did so because I had that paper chosen. Hello, Brenda, Wendy, Sewing and Trifocals, also known as Allison, and Amy, Better Days. Hi, Carlene. I was going to call you. And let's see, my mouse, right now I have no tripods anywhere in my studio, which is really cool, but I'm still trying to figure out how to use the mouse to get them to go onto the right monitor. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Sue. You can hear me. I'm so glad you guys can hear me because for five seconds before I went live, you couldn't. <laughs> Shoo. I am alive. I didn't know if it was ever going to happen again. Did you guys feel that way? By the way, if you're watching today and it is July 13th of 2023 and you type member into the coupon code at creativefeet.com, you'll receive 20% off during the show and all the way up till midnight Mountain Standard Time. And right now it's 2.11 in Arizona. We do have in stock the Piping Wizard rulers, which we had out of stock for a while. And what else is in stock now? All of the Appliquick products are in stock. They were out of stock for a while. Now we have other things that are out of stock, but we won't talk about that. Talk about things we do have. We do have a really nice top camera view. What do you think? Are you guys happy? a little bit of a shadow i still have to figure out the lighting in here and hopefully because you may not know that i actually relocated into a physical lo location so it's not in my residence anymore which is partly why i didn't start going live already because i probably would have worked 24 hours a day seven days a week if i could and it was my daughter's wish that I would not do that, that I would start having a little bit more of a regular life on top of creative feet. And I am, I am actually going to take my first vacation since 1998. First vacation, not related to work. Next Thursday after the show, I'll be getting in the car and heading to Colorado and staying on my daughter's property. They have a 40-acre parcel with 360-degree views of the Colorado mountains. 
Are we having any issues, any lagging? Because this is, I need to know now if that happens because we might need to up our internet speed. So if my mouth is in sync and you're watching live, then all's good. Yes, there's a ruler for piping. And what it does, Allison, is it a lot, it cuts, it makes it so you can cut the elastic with a quarter inch seam allowance that's perfect so that you can sew it into different items that you are making and know that your piping seam allowance is perfect. And with our pearls and piping foot, you got perfect piping. So the two together is perfect for perfect piping. I'm getting a little redundant today. I did not iron yet and I was still choosing the fabric give you a close-up view of this ruler we'll see how well the close camera works now the close camera is right where i'm going to be walking so we'll see if i don't get in the way if you look at this it has four different seam allowance options and you place the ruler over the piping and then after you place it on the piping, you're able to cut. And if you go to creativefeet.com and look under tools, you'll find it there in a photo that shows really well what it is I'm speaking of. Let me get my iron. What color fabric backing should I use? Should I complement? I have this pretty, can't figure out how to show you that with this camera. I know what I'm gonna do. Switch to the top camera. I'll tell you, I haven't been this nervous to go live in a very long time. Interesting, this camera doesn't want to shoot in the same size as the other cameras. So I'm going to have this on the back, or I'll do this on the on the top, and I'll use a light color thread on top and a darker color on the bottom so you can see better when I do this design. No, I'm going to do the light color on top. Oh, goodness, Claire, make up your mind. What have you guys been doing for your summer? Have you sewn anything? I'd love to know what you've been doing to keep busy. And if there's anything yellow, if there's anything that you need or want from me, it's so funny because when I sent out a newsletter asking what you guys wanted me to teach, I got an advertisement mixed into a bunch of people saying what they wanted. And one of them was a a badge or a patch company selling me patches and I thought the person wanted to learn how to sew the patches <laughs> so I answered their ad with teaching them <laughs> how to sew patches on I wonder what they thought about that all in sync oh my gosh can you believe it I'll bet I'll bet Amy's like whoa there's no problems other than I'm not completely ready so if you've ever wanted to, I have these little attitude bracelets. I'm saying so a lot. I got to not do that. That's how I train myself not to say words I don't want to say while I'm live. And after months of being off, I have uh, been hanging around people that speak differently than I do. And I have picked up some habits. All of the presser orders have been produced and shipped out. So... It's a good time to order a presser as I'll be making them tomorrow. If you don't know what a presser is, I will show you one while I iron so you can see what they look like up close. And that is the Green Hornet, one of my favorites. This is Tequila Sunrise. It'll either look like that or brighter, depending on how long I cooked it for. And yes, I do cook the wood. This wood is not just regular wood. It has resin in it. 
that's vacuum that's pulled into the wood to make it stronger than wood. How many of you have one and what color is yours? Tell people what you think about it. I'm learning. I got to figure out where to put things in this much smaller space than I'm used to. As my iron is getting hot, I will show you. One form of free motion quilting is also known as fiber art. So you stitch, but instead of just stitching a particular design, well, you can sketch over fabrics that are maybe a panel. And this is a an inking that I did. I haven't turned the iron on. That would help. And I know a lot of you wanted me to teach this one, and I just did this all by myself without filming. So I'm going to be working on filming things I've already done, which is what this particular project is. I have already sewn this out. And I did it on a very neutral fabric. Let's try to hear. Hey, I can walk under the top thing. Come on, nothing falls, please. So this is how the design stitches out. And it's one of about 18 or 20 designs that I did in this concept, which, is, which I call hearts and feathers. So instead of the typical shape of a feather, all the designs have a different shape feather, like a, a bird actually has. Now to get the design off the paper and onto the fabric, we're going to use the Caterpillar Light Tablet, which is beneath my ironing surface. You have, you have, oh, you have the, the purple and the green one, the one we call Tropic Jungle, and a plum. You've been way too busy to sew. Any new grandchildren, you guys? Oh, there's actually water in my iron. I set it there too long. Oh, well. Perhaps I will flip this over and see if it's clean on the back. Try to iron the back as well. This is going to be a quilt where I'm going to quilt through all the layers. Sometimes I don't. Like on this, I did. But many times, if you watch me, you'll see that I do not always back my quilts before I do the stitching. And that is because, well, sometimes you don't need to, and sometimes you want to actually use a quilted surface for the top of a pillow, for instance. You've been hemming zillions of pairs of pants. She's got a lot of pants, or he. Oh, her, her torso is long. I know about that because that's my issue. I have a long torso and I know exactly how to make your torso longer in a pair of pants. I learned that when I was 16 because all the pants were made for the more common shorter torso. And because I have a long torso, I have really short legs. As an artist, you learn early that if you draw a person, if they have a short torso, they have long legs, there's, there's usually a ratio on the human form. Long legs, short torso, sh long torso, short legs. Check it out. Look, in, look at people's photos and see if you notice that to be true now that you know. Come on, Iron. Sorry, you guys. And also, by the way, should I need to use a ladies room, I have to actually walk to a, a outside and up and around. So I'm probably going to limit the show to an hour because of that. You know what I'm going to base it on? I think I'll base it on whether or not I need to actually go. 
So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off if I can figure out how and grab some batting and give you the elbow pads to look at, which was done using the same fabric that's on my sewing machine right now. It's a very cute little pillow. And what it's designed for is what? You guys tell, tell everyone what this pillow is for as I get myself a piece of batting and some thread. I'm going to pick a color thread. So it's blue fabric. What color thread do you think I should use? What complements blue on the color wheel? See if you guys remember. I feel like I need to move the machine a little. Ah, my head got in the way. <laughs> Hmm. I have so many different colors to choose from. Hurry up. Yellow. Yeah, yellow's right. So I was thinking it's this color. That's a real soft yellow. But you guys need to be able to see it while I stitch, right? So... Is that two gold or I'm going to give you three choices and so one, two, or three, which color yellow would you like me to use? Where's my cord for my cutter pillar? Got too many drawers. Uh oh, we got it all organized. Oh. Well, I know where the cord is for the little cutter pillar, and I chose because when I moved, I moved quickly. I chose an actual office desk to use because my my space is very narrow. That's why I, I'm up against the wall. And uh, But it has this nice little tray in here. And I can actually store my light tablets and cutting mats in here. So I'll just use the smaller cutter pillow and... Trace some, because I know where the cord is for this right now. There are three different sizes of the Cutter Pillar light tablets. And what they allow you to do is cut and draw on top of a light surface. And you can see how thin they are. Get that out of the way. So this thin, thin profile means you won't get your arm hurt from resting against a raised surface if you have a traditional light ta table that I used to have. Actually built a really cool one long, long time ago, but it hurt. I was always sore after drawing for a long period of time. So basically when you get this pattern, if you're in the VIP group, you're going to tape the two pieces together to get the actual shape. And I can draw one of these little hearts and feathers to save time. Or I could, because I'm like, this would really be cool. I already did this design that I'm about to show you using the fabric inks. And I, and I inked this heart design, but I could quilt that design as well. 
there's more than one mat that comes with these cutter pillars. They have ones with lines all through them, and then this is one that doesn't have lines. So you can see really well. All of these you can use a rotary cutter on. I recommend getting two of these, one you cut on and one you draw with. This is my draw with one, and this is one that's cut, and I got a lot of cut marks on the surface, which does cause the, the pin to kind of skip on my cut marks. So since I'm not cutting on this, I have my smooth brand new one. You know, I haven't sewn at all in three months either, except for my attempt <laughs> to go live with the VIPs. And so I'm going to give you guys extra special treats for understanding my predicament when I tried to do our VIP live. And for those of you who don't know what the VIP is, it's a VIP group of uh, students inside of my school, createwithclairowley.com, which is in the link at the top of the chat. It says school, I believe. So the light tablet, when you tap on the, the little power, there it is couldn't see it from my vantage point. So you just tap on it and you have actually three different levels of brightness. This is the basic and then the next one up has a power cord in it that a lot or a battery inside of it that charges it for up to four hours of just sitting on your couch and being able to draw. And then there's the ultra, which is two times the size of this, which is beneath that. So I, I get, would you like me to do the hearts and feathers one design or would you like me to do the heart and see how that turns out? Well, since I'm giving the, what do you guys want me to do? <laughs> oh my goodness. This drives my son crazy. He goes, you ask way too many questions. Do I ask too many questions? Chartreuse. Mm. Yeah, like a peach, a salmon color would also go nicely. The boats are all over the place. Well, that's not helpful. I guess I'll have to decide. I have some tape. This is the uh, washi tape, which is just like painter's tape. And you can tape your piece of paper onto the surface. I can't believe I'm going on vacation, you guys. Now I have vacation brain. And I can't think of anything better than spending time with my daughter. And her wonderful husband. And I'm not going to cancel the show to go on vacation. I timed it to leave. I figured I'd put you through enough waiting. I'm going to leave after the show and then come back the day before the show. So I have a whole day to prepare. But I'm going to try to prepare next week's show this week and plan a, a lesson that goes two weeks. So I'll already be ready for the show when I come back. So I'm thinking maybe a, some type of a zipper bag, because I'll tell you what, you, I, you can never have too many zipper bags when you're about to travel. So I thought, well, maybe I should design one. I'm going to do some plain air painting while I'm there. And I might, and I say might, because I'm, I'm not supposed to be working on vacation. I might film some of the paintings outside because that's what plain air painting is is painting outside from real life something i've always wanted to do have any of you done plain air painting before got any suggestions for me i'm going to my daughter's property when brenda and staying on a tra in a trailer on 
a pad that they have on their property. And it's really luxurious. So it's like a fine hotel. Except for I'm with my, my little girl. And we both are early risers, so we'll be able to wake up, have coffee, watch the sunrise. Sorry if I'm talking too much about it. Now with this laid on top, you can then lay your fabric over that and see the lines and trace the design. And that is how I trace that pattern before I did this. Now what you are not aware of is what type of thread did I use and how did I get it to be such a strong stitch pattern? I don't know if you can tell it is that. Let's see if I can get closer. So this stitch, I went around with this much accuracy three times around all of the design. And that is how I got this thread to look so thick and full bodied without having to use a cotton thread that's real heavy or something. At the time there was no polyester thread thicker. And uh, we could speed up the process by using the jean stitch thread or using pearl crown rayon. Now the company that I buy this from also went through a transition over the last three months. The owner retired and sold his business. So I have to reconnect now with the new owners and get in. And I'll be getting in this thread because this is the one that I used for an applique with blanket stitch and it sewed through a needle beautifully. If you guys remember that. You never know what a vacation will do to my creativity. I didn't grab the batting yet. So I think you can see the colors better here while I go grab the batting. So one, two, or three. Now I gotta remember, where did I put all that? I have all this batting already cut for this type of thing. It is really tight in here, you guys. Don't get me wrong, it was tight in my other studio too, with all the equipment. The batting I like to use is the bamboo batting, 100% bamboo. It is available at creativefeet.com and in all sizes. And uh, I believe Brenda had one going out yesterday and it, it, it did go out. In case you were wondering. Did we choose three? So you all want this color, huh? Was that the one I had? Is that three? I picked them up and didn't look first. So yes, if this was number three, somebody who voted for number three would know. I'm sorry, you guys, that I spaced out on that. I'm so sorry, Brenda. You don't know. There are times in life that really test you as a person in, in, in its entirety. 
I'm going to try not to get emotional. But in August of last year, which seems like just yesterday, like I just blinked, and it's next month, will be a year since my father passed away. And then in December, Tinkerbell went over the Rainbow Bridge, as they say. I don't really openly talk about things that will depress people. So not everybody knew that that she went, but I knew that when the show was going on, you guys would wonder, so I had to. And Chase is doing really well. He had to have surgery. He had, he had a couple tumors and uh, teeth. But this is outside of my look, my home. And bringing Chase in the car, because he's a clumsy oaf, it's really challenging. I'm trying to make it so I can drive him in the car without him getting hurt from driving in the car. So I've got all this rigging that I put together, and we'll see. But he's doing really good, and he's he would love to be here. It's always better to have your back fabric larger than your top fabric when you're going to do a sandwich quilt. But I believe all these pieces are the same size, so I'm going to do my best to center this. Of course, using the light tablet will help with that. It's okay. Tinkerbell lived almost 19 years. It's really long, considering she was the runt of the litter. So I had a lot of losses, and then right after, I didn't really get to grieve Tinkerbell, because then the, the landlord where I was living, where I was hoping I could buy the house, she decided she was going to move back in. And I got 30-day notice to do it. So I didn't get to really react very long to the loss. And uh, throughout the entire moving process, what I cried about was that I didn't have my kids around me. So. And there weren't any places to rent. So I'm, I'm actually living with my friend Terry right now. I could find a place to put my business, but not a house without an exorbitant amount of, of cost. So, and so I, I didn't want to have to rush my decision on where I lived. And she came to the rescue, great friend, to be able to do that. And now, yeah, I'm a roommate. I've never been a roommate with other women before, other than my daughter. It's, it's an interesting time in our lives right now, isn't it? amazing what you can go through and so I am back with you because I love you guys and I didn't trace the design because you talked about Tinkerbell okay that's ready so I'm gonna go ahead and line this up and I recommend that you take your fabric and find the center by folding it twice and you can iron or use one of the pressers to press the center. Now I have an X on the fabric. So I can line that up with the center of that design, which I can make more prominent. It's harder for you guys to see this because of the camera than it is for me to see it in person. So know that. Oh, this is the pad. We don't want to do that. So it would be good to use a ruler and find your center on the pattern. And also have some marks on each for, for those of you who are going to actually be sewing this. Find the center on all of those sections as well. This is the area where you're able to do fill-in stitches if you like, or leave it voided like I did.
I'm so excited about going on vacation. What should I do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see the marmots. Have you guys ever heard of the marmots in Colorado? She's been, my daughter's talked about this for years. And every time I went to Colorado, it was not marmot season. I can't see because it's too bright in here. If the room were darker, I could see this better. There we go. Apparently there's this thing called a something alpine slide. I think it's what it's called in the Alpine slide. I have no idea. <laughs> All I know is I get to see marmots popping out and saying hello and stuff. So I'm just going to trace one design for now so that you're not bored. I know that you'd like me to stay on for four hours or something, but I turned the air conditioner off when I started and it's going to get unbearable in here at some point. These pins are friction pins, but they're friction markers instead of friction pins. They're cute little, little creatures that live high in the Rockies. You should look them up. Google what a marmot looks like. So this is the first time. It's kind of like when I went to see my son in Seattle, it was never whale watching season. And one time it finally was, and I got to go see the, the orcas. So this is the first time in all these years. She's lived there eight years now. And I used to go through Colorado at least twice a year. Now that I'm settled here, I will be considering doing a live event at the Prescott Resort. And also we have this little cute little place not far from where I'm at where I can teach two day classes. The problem with, the, with that location is your sewing machines can't remain in there. They're not safe. You know, there isn't a lock. A locked room that they can be kept in so you would have to take your sewing machines out and then bring them back the next day if that's something that sounds good to you the Prescott Resort is a casino and oops and that's that's ideal because we'll have a hotel room but it'll be more expensive than these other class that I'm talking about Well, that's my cell phone, and now you know my ringer. It's classical music to keep me calm. I'm almost in the. I'm also in the process of finishing editing the audible version of my novel Beyond the Breaststrokes, which is a lot of work. Everything I do requires sitting down and staring at screens. Laguna Beach. Uh, you know, I, I love Ventura Beach. I used to stop at this place at Ventura Beach every year on my way up to Seattle and San Francisco and other areas where I would go do shows. Yay. Okay. Almost to the sewing part. Yeah. Rent is just, you know, it's something's got to shift. This next generation is we don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about things that are joyful. Let's see here. Does, does a zipper bag sound like a good project, a two-part project? And I was thinking we could, you know, always go a little bit further by maybe I can give you guys a, a painting design so you can paint the fabric before. Which way is the right way? This way. Now, how can I line these up with the batting in between so that I know I'm centered? Anybody know?
you take a pin. I'll be adding these very soon to our site, the ironable Teflon pins, if you guys don't already have them. There were several times when I was frustrated I didn't have them. Now that we're situated, there'll be some other items that I'll be adding that I love or have wanted to have. Hi, Susan. Welcome. And if I missed anyone's name, it's because the chat's moving quickly. And it's so, so grateful that you're all back with me after, oh my gosh, being gone for three months from the live. I either it's because I'm getting older or everything is getting harder to open. Have you guys noticed that packaging is becoming like you need a special device to open packages? <sighs> Did you all receive the notification from the school? If not, and you are a member, make sure your notifications are turned on. The Creative Feed Extensive is going to start. I'm going to be announcing things the week following my return from my daughters. It is time. Yes, yes. So you can take a straight pen and line up your center mark. If you plan, if you did your center mark on, on both pieces, you just take a straight pen and insert it. in that center and if I had done the same thing on the back side I'm not that I'm not that worried about it but I can see that I'm not centered now so I got to move it up a little and over a little but you can just go right in that X and now you can fidget with it Ready. One last time, you guys. Now, I don't have to use the same color in the bobbin that I use in the, in the needle. Please let my bobbin box be where I think I put it. It's a good time to buy a master set of the Deco Bob bobbins. I thought I had right here. Oh well. So you have the option to have two different colors. One a different shade in the bobbin. So like I think this would be pretty in the bobbin. Or we can use both the same. This feels like a an aqua or a, a nautical kind of feel to it. The middle one, all right. We're going with the middle one. And I'm just gonna use it in the bobbin to save time. If you're not familiar with the deco bobs, they are fantastic bobbins. We, we've been out of thread dispensers, by the way. So I'm finally to the point where we're set up to manufacture the missing part we only have one part that we're missing so we'll be able to bring those back up quick as well the thread dispenser is usually full of a bunch of bobbins and i'm not sure where all the stuff was was put that was on my thread dispenser so i'm gonna wind a bobbin and why not also teach you how so this is the thread dispenser there's usually stacks of bobbins up here that are different colored and also I put skinny spools of thread on that and you're able to sew with them from that directly to your sewing machine. I don't know where my grab it is. Got to put the pin back. Lost your internet connection for a while. Oh yeah, yesterday I heard that a good portion of the United States didn't have internet. You have an electric jar opener. Does that work for everything? Uh, 
Okay. So with the thread dispenser, you take your thread and you put it on one of the vertical spools. I spool posts. I designed this so that you can do double needle work and have both threads come up to the eye hooks and then come back to the sewing machine. And now there's zero tension on the thread and it's perfectly in line with the center of the spool beneath it and also the right distance or right height so that the thread relaxes as it comes off the spool. If you've ever used an overlock machine and found that your stitch pattern has a little tug in it every inch or so and it's a consistent tug, it's probably because your thread stand is not tall enough. So the thread is snapping off the top of the spool a little bit at, at one point in the unwrapping process. And that little tug is causing a tension change. Time to trim my bangs. There we go. I don't have a trash can, so I'm just throwing things down on the floor. My trash can's over there. I forgot to bring it over here. There should be no changes in my life for at least a year and a half. It'll be nice to be able to settle in and get it all figured out. I've been blessed to be able to have this time to do some soul searching and make decisions on where I want my life to go. So the next thing is we're choosing a needle to use and the needle is on the machine because it's almost always the needle that I like to use. And this is the super universal needle. And what it, what makes it super is that it has a coating on it, not the, not the, uh, titanium because titanium is too strong and can make your your needle come down and if anything is causing the needle to not come down correctly your needle can come down and bend instead of breaking and then the hook can grab it and rips apart the bottom of your sewing machine which is why I don't sell the titanium needle at creativefeet.com I don't want to be responsible for providing you with anything that can damage your machine the super universal non-stick needle has a Teflon coating on the outside, so it makes it slippery, which does give you the benefit of having better stitch quality when doing embroidery, but also it is fantastic for quilting, as when the needle goes into the batting and then comes out, it doesn't lift the, the fabric and the batting up as it exits the material. So there goes that word again. I'm teaching Terry's grandson how to be a youtuber as well so I did just film with him and I will be completing footage with him soon and it'll upload on a new channel called beyond the brushstrokes which is a channel where I can do whatever I want and then this channel will continue to be just sewing quilting and embroidery if you want to take an adventure with me through other interests that I have writing and painting and drawing and voiceover and stuff like that, graphic design. That's where I'll be creating videos of whatever I want. And the batting is flying through the air as usual. Oh, close. So these are the super universal needles. When you buy from our site, you most often get just this part. You don't get this card. And our needle prices are lower than most other websites because of that. We don't pay for that paper, which most of you throw away anyway. So just so you know, so you're not surprised by that. And there is the actual needle. The groove on this needle is able to stitch because this is the 9014 size. It is able to stitch out using 40 weight thread without any problem at all, but you can also quilt using the denim jean stitch thread that we offer at creativefeet.com, which I'm out of right now, the color that I wanted to use. I'm using my needle threader because it's fine to use the needle threader. 
with this weight of thread going through the needle. But if I were using the jean stitch thread, I would use the handheld perfect needle threader that I carry on our site that we're out of, but it's on its way. We can't keep those in ever since I got them in stock. For some people are buying 10 at a time. I'm thinking they're buying them for their friends probably, or never have kind of like I have try readers in every room, uh, having a needle threader in every room. Who knows? So even though it says they're out of stock, don't hesitate to buy because they are, as I said, on their way. I forgot to wind the bobbin. <laughs> Do I have a bobbin that's close enough? I don't think so. I would if I had any idea where that was. This is not a day to try something new, and I was thinking of trying something new, so I'll just wind the bobbin. <laughs> I guess I, I should have expected something after not doing the show for three months, considering how challenging it was to just get the show started in the first place. I forgot how to wind my bobbin. Oh my goodness. I remembered. Hello, Janet. You just finished dinner. What did you have? How hot is it in Prescott? It is close to the century mark. And I had the air conditioner cooling the building down. But when I go live, I have to turn them off. So it's a matter of time before I simply get too hot. Maybe not. Wouldn't that be nice? But the lights in here cause it to get hot as well. If I didn't need to light the room to film. I didn't notice if I was in focus or not. Am I in focus? I had the... I had the room all painted a color and then when I put the cameras on it I looked sick <laughs> so so then I had to paint it all over again definitely need to put something cute right there huh that little plate time to make new samples too time for new projects if there's any particular animal or item or thing that that you would like me to paint perhaps for a full class on painting your fabric and then quilting it don't hesitate to ask and suggest and you can do that in the school whenever you reach out to me in the school it, it actually texts my cell phone and i have my phone set to turn off at a certain time every night and not turn on until the next morning and the business cell phone is now a cell phone so you can actually text the number creative feats number should you ever want to and it's uh sometimes easier to get me to text you than it is i forgot what am i doing oh yeah so don't hesitate to text and stuff you guys a lot of people are afraid to to do that thinking you're going to wake me up but i got it set business phone does not turn on over the weekend anymore trying to have a, a work-life balance so these little elbow pads are for resting your elbows while doing any type of work where you would normally put your hands down and fiddle this is a free pattern inside of the school which is free for you to join create with claire rowley.com it's 111 where is it 111 in phoenix so that means we're probably at 98 degrees right now out there the other day was 107 degrees when i left the next vip you have to be a member of the vip to be in it some of your subscriptions are ending or ended yesterday all right now where are my octi hoops they're over there oh. 
the pattern for this also gives you the ability to to make different sizes this arm being an inch and a half shorter than this arm i use a shorter a shorter elbow pad for my right arm and a, and a higher one for my left arm and that levels me out so my spine is centered so i don't get in between the shoulder blades burning muscle muscle burn starting to get hot it's all right i'm a little whiny but i'll i'll uh likely start put my hair up then take off my jacket like the kind of thing i did at shows when people didn't want me to quit yes i'm i'm learning how to have downtime takes takes practice I'm sure there was a time, maybe not, when I didn't constantly be doing these things. People are always asking, how did you do all the things you've done? I have to walk really slow because my... My dairy air can knock things over in here. The Pony Express Ride. What is the Pony Express Ride, Janet? Is that a bike, bicycles, or is it motorcycles, or horses? Are they on horses? That would be fun. I used to have horses. The Octi Hoops come with three different size frames, each one coming down in size. They're sold as a set, never sold separate, because you need all three, even if you don't realize it when you first purchase it. It also makes it cheaper as a result, because we are not having to have an odd number of different size frames. You lived at the hospital. Does that mean you've been ill and now you're not anymore? You're home? I have to trim these bangs. One hair just keeps going right in front of my eye and just like a camera, my eye keeps going in and out of focus. They, they do it on horseback. Wow. I love that. I need to look into that. Tell them I'm proud of them. That's huge because it's so hot. If you want to use the hoops for free motion embroidery, we have a stabilizer stick and tear, which is this big roll that you see on the end of there. Too far. Oh, here's one. So this stabilizer is has a green frog on the label. It's at creativefeet.com under the, excuse me. I think I'm starting to perspire and so I'm itchy. You don't want to know that stuff. Remember we have a 20% member is all uppercase typed into the coupon box at creativefeet.com today and always check that code because I reuse it from time to time. The, the amount of the discount changes depending on my, depending on whatever I choose. This is one of my bowl cozies and I do use it also for a coaster at the shop to keep precipitation from the uh, cups from dripping down and getting on my desk. This is also what I use for my coffee cup. So this is the smallest version of that pattern. And that is a pattern you'll find under patterns at creativefeet.com, my bowl cozy pattern, which is unique to every other version of the pattern. And if you've been told cotton is the right thread and fabric and batting to use, that is not accurate. I do have a video in my YouTube channel on the science of making bowl cozies. The science explains all the different fabric types. They're flammable conditions and, and and why this rumor got out there that that was the right stuff to use or right fabric and batting and thread to use 
is simply people guessing, not based in science. And everything I do is based in science because we're all molecules floating around. All right, now I'm getting weird. I got to take a sip of this so I can keep going. The ice has melted and now I'm starting to melt. So back to this, bird, this and I'm going to take some sips. I'm going to mute my mic and hopefully I won't forget to turn it back on. I won't. I totally forgot to turn off my microphone. So sorry if you had to hear me swallow. So when we use the stabilizer with the octa hoops, we place it on the back of the hoop and it adheres actually to the frame, but it can also peel off of the frame, leaving you with the ability to then put another piece on for another project. And, uh, but for quilting, we don't want to have any stabilizer on the back side. Wasn't too bad. I love this microphone. I don't have to mute, I guess. I didn't hear me swallow, did you guys? Don't melt. I'm melting. So pretend the quilt is laid over the top, because that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay this fabric over and then this frame is going to drop inside of that one to get the two frames to move simultaneously you are involved and what your job is is to bring the corner of the smaller frame into the corner of the top frame but with the quilt in the way so you cannot see it but you can feel the inside of that and that is what makes the fabric lock to the hoop, even though nothing is locked. And now the whole quilt moves. Once you get the hang of keeping the frames together, then you bring in this little handle. And this little handle is separate. You get two of them in the kit. And you just, they fit into these holes, which are not through and through holes. And they just... They drop snugly into the hole so you can actually pick it up. That reminds me of a toy. What toy is that? <laughs> I think it's a wazoo or something like that. I remember it making an obnoxious noise. Okay. Now I'm distracted. So the trick to this is getting your brain to know that the, the non-dominant hand, I'm right-handed, has a job and its job is to grab the two frames and keep them together. And then your dominant hand, well, it's going to rest on this frame. And so that is helpful to have it in a position where you can rest your hand and still hold the handle. And then it all moves together. After a while of doing this, your brain remembers. And just as when you drive somewhere, talking to your friends and then you arrive and you feel a little bit disturbed because you don't remember driving somehow you got there so this part of the brain once it learns how to do this you you can actually space out like that too listen to music or i like to listen to movies that i've already seen before so i can visualize the movie that takes me even further out of what i'm doing and it's super relaxing as long as you don't quit before you begin. I have a whole bunch of tools on, in front of me and they're not sewing tools. Bunch of tacks. It's so tacky. All right, I'm getting corny. Hi, Madeline. All right, I got somewhere to, oh, I don't have a, oh well. So many changes have happened in the last three months. My suppliers, some products I've been buying from certain places, they aren't selling them anymore. Now I have to go to a new supplier, start a new relationship with them. So uh, bear with me as some items, if they're out of stock, I'm, I've, I've been slowed down on restocking. I will not give up because the stuff I like is really good. 
And I would never want you not to have the goodies that I have. There goes some more batting floating by. It's like little birds. Now we're going to go to the close camera and discuss the snap-on adapter. I feel like I could lower the camera a little bit. Let me see if I can't make that a little better. Get that thing out of there. I was trying to make it so you could see the hippopotamus on the side of the machine, but I think it's better you don't see. I'll let you see the hippopotamus for a minute. There he is. There's the little hippo. This is my jungle scene machine. Got a hippopotamus on this side. I don't remember what I have on the other side. An elephant on the other side. Yeah, I definitely need to lower that camera. All right. I'm going to remove the snap-on adapter on my machine if I can find my screwdriver. I have this one. This is my girly screwdriver for everything I do around the shop. Loosen the screw and you can actually take the screw all the way out and put it away or keep it on the machine. I like to store my stuff so I can't lose it. Because I don't have Amy here to find everything for me. Hello, Ingrid. Welcome. As long ado, not quit before you begin. So true. Yes. Thank you for participating. I don't think I've seen you in here before. Did I talk to you this week? I think I did. I had some very nice conversations this week. Now, another thing that you can do when free motion is drop your feed dogs. And my feed dogs, even though you can't see them, are actually up or engaged. I gotta find my foot control. Oh, there you are. Come out from hiding. Okay, so one tap of the foot control. Can't do that without the foot down. And you can see the feed dogs are now up or raised above the bed of the machine. For those of you who are new to free motion or sewing machines in general, feed dogs are metal and they pull the fabric through when you're sewing with a foot and they only pull the fabric through if there's actual pressure from above, and that is why a pressure foot or presser, P R E S S E R, which is what I'm known for. I invented the creative feet. This is a bag full of them. So a presser foot is engineered to sit on top of your feed dogs, and then they, they kind of move together because of the adapter that I just removed also has a spring inside and this little spring gives the foot some movement i grab a foot without a bar that's funny this snap this is how the creative feet attach to the machine if you have a regular sewing machine i feel like that light's too bright there we go. now if you have a sewing machine that has screw on feet then you'd select screw on feet one of our adapters that comes in each of the packages will snap on and adapt our feet to your machine. That being said, when doing free motion, you don't have to use a foot at all. If you want to use a foot, a free motion foot would be the foot to use. Oh, I know where I put that. Oops. I think I found my bobbins all in a pile. So this is one of my caddies that I've got another pattern that's free. So you can use a free motion foot. Oh, there's I snap myself. There's different free motion feet. This one doesn't have a spring. It's more of a floating foot that kind of floats above the surface. Where's my spring? Oh, there it is. 
And this is another foot that you can use. This is a spring-loaded free motion foot with open toes in the front. This would be the best one to use for free motion quilting. Should you feel the need to use a foot? And I have no intention of using a foot because... Oh, the batting. Because the... The, the purpose of the foot is to do what? What is a presser foot doing when you're sewing? What does it do? This is a little test. Here's a better visual of one of the caddies. And this pattern is the octi hoops. All you have to do is cut out an octi hoop cut out two pieces of fabric and one batting and you have you sew the pieces together or up the sides and you end up with a square little caddy three different size hoops three different size caddies not only does the octa hoop do that for you but it's also a fussy cutting for making octagon quilts so you can cut using the outside and the inside of all three of the frames so these become quilting templates as well as quilting and embroidery frames doesn't get much better than that oh the bangs i'm finally ready to sew i think too much stuff on my table you definitely don't want a bunch of stuff on your elbows put this back once again my left elbow is shorter arm is shorter than my right significantly enough to where I feel the need for a different size pillows. Should you have an issue like that, know that these pillows help a lot in your body's well-being and also in helping you be more accurate when you sew. Because when you're sitting in an upright position on a chair, like I am, in case you haven't noticed that when you are I think I'm going to move this over a little more. You need to be able to see my hand in the next shoot. So I am centered with my needle. This should always be what you look out for before you start sewing. Don't be sitting off to the side and lean to sew. Always make sure you're in line with the needle and that way you won't hurt your body from leaning. This is especially important with free motion. Frequently I can't do that because I have equipment in front of me, so I'm trying to be nicer to my body. Normal free motion is done pushing against the, the fabric and against the sewing machine and the bottom fabric is then being grabbed or stuck by the sewing machine oh this batting when you push against a smooth surface it's sticky it's kind of like wearing shorts and trying to slide on top of the hood of a car so they sell different products for that sprays oh, don't do that be nice to your lungs they have there there's available these these slippery pads that you put on the machine and tape to your machine but that's still not going to solve the problem because you're still forced to push down against the fabrics and you have three different layers working against one another and that causes them to stretch so what we do instead is sorry that's trying not to say so take the bottom frame and put it beneath and you can see how now the batting and fabric all three layers are lifted or slightly raised supported cradled carried over the sticky surface of your machine and the frame is a unique bottom on it that makes it slippery on your machine it doesn't scratch your paint of your sewing machine and now you have freedom of movement I'm going to do that. Sew the heart first. You can roll your quilt up like that. You want to rest your arm on the actual sewing machine, not your whole arm, but whatever part of your body is 
is actually going to push down against your machine with your elbows on the elbow pads. You need to make sure you're not laying on your quilt because if you are, your arm will stop the quilt from moving. Simple as that. It's kind of a silly thing that people realize. I can't get my quilt to move. And it's because they were laying on top of it. <laughs> I'm still wondering where that cord is for the larger light tablet. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring the fabric up through earth. <laughs> no, we're not. We're going to actually bring the needle, bring the lower the needle and then raise it. Doing so with the presser foot lowered. If you don't have the presser foot lowered, so I'm going to raise it right now. So ugh. I can pull my thread and you can, I'm holding it tight. I'll try to see if I can do this so you can see what's happening. I'm pulling, I pull the thread. If I could mark it, then you would see that. Absolutely. I'm pulling it. It's sliding through the needle and the needle is not deflecting. Once you lower the presser foot, it engages the tension discs. They close on the thread. And now the needle, if I pull on it, see how it's pulling the needle? If you do not lower the presser foot while doing free motion, you end up with big loops on the bottom of the fabric. People have called that the bird's nest. So now I'm bringing my bobbin thread up by doing this. In order to get your bobbin thread to come up, you have to lower that foot to engage the thread, the needle tension. Now I want to rest my finger. I have to figure out this camera angle is not, not good. I need a different camera angle. So I don't hide what I'm doing from you. So now I'm just going to hold down uh, whoever I hang out with right now that says the word so all the time. I'm going to have a talk with them. <laughs> YDS. Oh. Oh, she's talking about the little glider, not glide. Glide is a brand of thread as well, DS, in case you aren't aware of that. Glide thread is a good thread. So I... So a few stitches over and then come back and you can cut the thread. That's one way to start. If you don't really care about people seeing your beginning or your end. And what I had done prior was I sewed around the entire pattern three times. So no one would ever see that I did that. Should you only want to sew one time around, you could bring your bobbin thread up and then Pull the quilts aside and it pulls the needle and bobbin thread in between the two layers of fabric. I've shown that on many of my videos. One of my favorite tools are the Appliquit tweezers, which we do have in stock right now. As I mentioned, we just got our import from Spain, which is where all the Appliquit products are produced. She is my friend and also a inventor of things that are ergonomic so you don't you barely have to use any muscles these also are great for pulling out chin hairs <laughs> and here we go the best thread ever or best tweezers for pulling or holding thread by far now I have my left hand because I am left-handed. Let me see if I pull out a little bit on this camera. Let me give you a little bit more view here. Is that better? Yeah. So my thumb, my thumb is on the the point of the frame beneath, like that. And then my index finger is there and I grab the two together. That's all I'm doing. Just pulling them together. And because they're thick, they nest within one another. And then you can move the whole thing and it glides real easily over the surface of the fabric. Speaking of the word glide. 
Where's Tina? I don't know. Maybe she's on vacation. I don't have my readers. Oh, no. Do I have a pair over here? I'm not going to make you wait while I go grab some. I think I, instead of having eight pairs, I need like 28 pairs. And I could put one everywhere I ever stop. Oh, well. See how well I do. If you need glasses, wear them. And I'm not looking at the needle. I'm looking about a half inch away from where I'm going. Just as when you walk, you shouldn't look at your feet because you can trip. You always want to look where you're going, not where you're at. Maybe Tina's on a vacation. I have my cruise control all the way down. Cruise control. My speed control. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed is what I chant to myself before I begin. So you can see, maybe you can't because it's too light. That's why I wanted to use that crimson color. And notice I'm moving my hands slow and the machine is running slow. You do not have to run the machine at high speeds. A lot of people think that you need to rev up the machine and so really quick, but you do not. Trying to get you a better angle here. And maybe there's just too much light. I'm going to take the light down a little bit. Is that easier to see? Yes, it is. So for now, I'm looking through the hole of this light. My brain's going to think it's a magnifying glass, and it isn't. So what I want to do, because I like the look of it, is go around more than once. This would be normally very challenging to go back over a stitch and be accurate. Significantly easier to do if you have your readers on when you need them. Or even better yet, my prescription glasses, which I have some more. Now you can see how prominent that looks. It looks even better. And I missed because my bangs went in my eyes. Over here. Free motion quilting is what you're seeing. A line of stitching. I'm not having to worry about crisscrossing over another area. Stippling is where you have to, you're supposed to not go back over where you already were. Well, now we're going to find out how an airplane sounds going overhead. Let's see if it comes across. I can't see, and this is in the way. Move up on them here. Okay, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Don't push down on the on the frames. Very light hold on the fabric. Now I can go all the way around and come back and go back around again. You could also choose to have just the heart be thicker thread than the rest. Then I'm just scooting with my finger, just kind of scooting the bottom frame over and then you pull the top frame over. So once again, to, to get to where I can see over here, pull the frame down and pull this one down. There is shifting of the fabric, but there would be shifting of your hands and the fabric without the hoops. Taking your time and quilting or stitching with a slower process like this makes you a lot more accurate. Not looking at the needle because you're already there. You want to look where you're going, not where you're at. 
these are words to say out loud to help you when you're sewing that you don't forget what you're supposed to do. And back over. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Looking where you're headed, not where you're at. That almost rhymed, didn't it? What's the purpose of the spring in the free motion foot? I will show you that after I finish this little section here. If you want. Now you see, you see how the fabric is staying? It's it's stained. The question I asked earlier is what does the foot do for you? The foot holds the fabric down. So the octahoops are a giant foot. This is the a foot. Think of it as a free motion foot and it's set right down on top. Slide this over. We got trucks outside. If that's if you hear heard that, that's what that is. If you didn't hear it, I'm making mention of it today so that I know what the sound was to see if there's an issue that I can make better. The voiceover booth, you can't hear any of that. But I can't sew in the voiceover booth. It's too small and dark. So I'm moving my, my hand, and now I have my thumb in the V and I'm bringing it to the inside of the frame up here. So this is another way that your, your body will adapt. You'll be, when you stop thinking about it, you, this hand will grab corner and corner. You can never grab more than one corner at a time. And it'll become an automatic, excuse me, it'll become like an automatic behavior that you don't even, oh, you're not even aware that you're moving your hand around. That's why I like, to have you guys sing or listen to movies because that takes your brain into a visual distraction. Now that I've done half of this with the feed dogs in the up or raised position, I'm going to lower the feed dogs just so you guys know you can also sew with the feed dogs lowered and you'll hear it. I think maybe not. They did just lower. All right, so partly why I like to at least go around twice is because there's areas where you do inevitably go over a line twice. It becomes a lot prettier if all of the lines are the same, have the same weight to them. Look where you're going, not where you're at. That's me talking to myself out loud. Good idea for you to do if you want to get your brain trained is to say things out loud, even if you're all by yourself. Who are you going to be embarrassed by? Yourself? Whoopsie. Know that I can't really read the chat while I'm stitching, because I'm looking at where, I, where I'm going. And I'm going to sew a little bit with you being able to see the front view. So you can see my posture and see that I'm resting. Elbows are down, shoulders relaxed, kind of like you're just sitting down talking to somebody and get yourself into that relaxed state of mind, that relaxed posture. If you're sitting where you are right now, odds are your shoulders are tight and lifted. It's just a an un unfortunate part of being a human. We tend to watch people and tighten up while we're watching them as if they're tight. And I'm not, so you should be relaxed as you're watching and when you're sewing as well. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Foot's just floating along. I, I can stop and readjust my hand and keep going along the line. Definitely get your glasses out. And when I don't talk, I'm a lot faster at sewing because I'm not teaching, using a different part of the brain when I'm doing it versus when I'm teaching it. Teaching 
sewing and talking at the same time is a is a challenge to anyone so when you watch anyone teaching you and they're actually moving their hands and doing something and analyzing what to say to you it's an admirable ability not really fishing for compliments just helping you be helping you be aware of all of your teachers and what they do to teach you now I can go back around the other way or I can go back this way and I it doesn't really matter unless your brain thinks it does just like some of us can park on the left side easier than we can park on the right side when you're in a parking lot how many of you have trouble parking one way or the other which way is the easiest way for you to park on the right side or the left side so Allison this this design is a free pattern for the VIPs they get free stuff every month and a and a private zoom class with me as well and I'm going to schedule the zoom class for July soon in answer to your question Carlene which you asked uh, what feels like almost an hour ago and we're close to being finished with today's class remember if you want me to teach something specific between now for the next class don't hesitate to ask for it if I don't teach it next time frequently I get phone calls and people have a question and then I go you know what I'm gonna teach that this week so you're never a bother if you call me I always am happy to hear from you guys and you cannot as I said you cannot wake me up I know that I was asked about the free motion spring foot so I'd like to not mess this up this quilting this design oh, it's too far I threw it too far it's a relatively large design it's square it could be the front of a bag could be the front of a purse it's definitely a nice square design I need to cut my bangs so the spring foot what it does is that spring behavior makes the foot hop up and down so that it's only holding the fabric while the needle is exiting the fabric and it's in time with the needle on your sewing machine because the little bar sits on the screw of your needle bar I don't have a good angle for the camera to show you that right now I'm gonna go ahead and sew a little bit with the foot so you can see it maybe I can angle the machine new studio gotta make a camera change and this is season 4 episode 11 of fabrically speaking live if you like this video I sure hope that you'll hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel and also join create with Claire Rowley my school as you put a foot on like this and it sits over the needle bar that cross it, it goes on top of it you need to make sure that you that you tighten the needle bar I can't show you the needle bar but there is a needle bar right here and I'm going to use the this to tighten the screw so a little bit tighter than finger tight is what you want to do so that you don't break off the needle bar screw and then this little bar that little bar positions on top of the actual needle bar screw and this wraps around where the screw goes if you have one of these in your machine you're good to go if you don't it's also known as a darning foot in fact there was no such thing as a quilting foot there was no such thing as a darning foot and we were doing free motion so free motion came first the feet came second so if you're you watched me do all of that without a foot and we're thinking what the heck she's doing that without a foot oh my gosh now you know you always could and the foot being used is a new newer method and one of the things I don't like about it is you can't see through the foot so as I'm moving this direction 
I can't really see the line. I'm, ha I'm having to really keep my mind focused behind the foot. However, those of you who are nervous about sewing without a foot, and not me stitching off of where I was supposed to go because I couldn't see through the foot. I'm not trying to make it look worse. I'm going to hop over and secure that so I can rip those stitches out because I want it to look good. I've been wanting to do this again for a long time. So know that I, oh, that word so, I have to snap myself. And when I say that, I'm snapping myself with these little rubber bands that have beads on them. It's a behavior bracelet. It breaks you of bad habits. And when you speak in public or film a lot or saying words that people don't like hearing, like um, this is a way of breaking that. Those are habits. Looking ahead of where you're going, not at the foot. I'm looking ahead of where I'm going, not at the foot. I'm distracted by the foot. Right now I can't see the line at all. I can't see a whole inch of the line, so I'm going to rotate it so I can see it. Scooting the frame by pushing the bottom frame up and then bringing the top frame in again. Just a little scooting here, a little scoot there. <laughs> Do not run the machine faster than you're able to sew because you'll just scare yourself or stress yourself out. If you have a sticky foot pedal, you may go accidentally too fast without even meaning to. That's what your speed control is for on your machine. If you don't have speed control on your machine, you put something underneath your foot control that prevents it from going all the way down. When I started teaching, I taught people to use an eraser and just cut off a little piece of eraser and put it between underneath your foot control between the base plate and the bottom of the or the bottom side of the pedal. And then it stopped that person from ever going too fast. Great way to teach children as well. And of course the creative feet are the best for teaching children because you don't have to get your fingers anywhere near the needle. And also good for those of us that are not kids anymore that just want to sew better. So that's free motion quilting, not stippling. Stippling is sewing around in patterns where you, you don't actually go back over a line. You're, you try not to go back over the line unless you're sewing pebbles which are circles. So if you want to sew a circle, I would do the same thing. I go around my circles twice and then go to the next one and then go to the next one and then go to the next one. I would show you the pebbles, but it's time to end because I believe it's officially approaching 80 degrees in here and I'm sweating and I shouldn't go. I'm trying to limit the show to an hour. I rarely succeed at that. So let's see. So in case you came in late, I am Claire Rowley, the inventor of Creative Feet, a line of sewing products made in the United States. We have always made them in the United States. They are made actually in Arizona, where I reside currently. And this is Fabrically Speaking Live, a weekly show that airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you get notifications of this show and other videos that I upload. Another reason to subscribe is I'm opening up another channel called Beyond the Breaststrokes, which is a bunch of other fun things to do in case you don't only sew quilt and embroider. If you're crafty and creative in lots of ways like I am, you're going to want to join that one as well. And I'll be uploading a new video probably starting August, the first week of August. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. 
And with that, I will see you next week or see you in the school. Remember, today only, July 13th, 2023. If you type in member, all uppercase, in the coupon box at creativefeet.com, you will receive 20% off your entire order at creativefeet.com. And you can pick up a light tablet and an OctaHoop kit and the Creative Feet and any other sewing, quilting, and embroidery product that you may need, knowing that I endorse and test everything that I sell at creativefeet.com. Love you all. I will see you next time. Bye. I'm still here seeing what you're all are writing and I love you all I missed you too I'm glad I'm back also I'm glad I lifted your spirits and got your sojo back on kisses hugs and see you next week